Hello, uh, my name is uh, John Baser, and welcome to the show John's World. Today we're going to talk about the Mars Society, and my guests today are Lucinda Weisbach and John McGowan. And uh, John, would you describe what the Mars Society is, please? I'm um, sure. The Mars Society is an international organization. It was founded several years ago by Dr. Robert Zubman, and it's dedicated to the exploration and hopefully eventual settlement of the planet Mars. And I am the chairman of the Northern California chapter, which is the chapter here in the Bay Area. Um, and we meet about once a month um, to do various things. And we participate in many activities. We've gone to Baycon. We've gone to the Sally Ride Festivals, to a variety of things that happen around here. We go give presentations on Mars. We show off our spacesuit. It's an imitation spacesuit, or we call a Mars analog spacesuit. And we, we try to educate people about the prospects for exploring and settling Mars. Okay, and Lucinda, how, how are you involved in the Mars Society? Uh, I am the Director of Public Relations for the Mars Society. And uh, like John said, we're an international organization, space advocacy organization, and I promote sending humans to Mars. I do uh, talks and presentations on the next step in our evolutionary process is to become a space-faring society. So I talk to, I'm a high school teacher, so I talk to young, and um, I've done presentations, um, gone to conferences at MIT, and gone to events that we do uh, locally, like at Stanford. Um, I also, we also have annual conferences, uh, and uh, we uh, mainly, the Mars Society um, advocates sending humans to Mars. We're privately funded just by our members. We're a grassroots organization, and several things that we do. One is we're politically active. So one of the things that we did last year in 2004 was lobby for the Moon, Mars, and Beyond initiative uh, during uh, July, and uh, we won in the lame duck session in November. So we did get initial funding of $10 million to start that project. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that we do uh, is the HABs, and we have a Mars Desert Research Station. It's called the Habitat, and it's for simulating humans on Mars so that one day when we are there, we're ready. And we do the six months out of the year. We do crew rotations uh, for two weeks. Uh, of approximately six, six crew members, and they, they're students, they're scientists, and that's in Hanksville, Utah. We also have one in the Arctic at Devon Island called Flashline Mars Desert, or Mars Research Station, excuse me. And there we have also scientists who are doing research projects and living in, in, in sim, simulation for living on Mars. It's all about practice, and it's all about learning what we need to do to send humans to Mars. Well, so where does the funding for the Mars Society come from? It comes from members. We're a grassroots organization. Um, we do have donors. We've had uh, we've had uh, fundraisers here locally in Silicon Valley, um, but mostly it's all by our members and from uh, fundraisers at conferences that we have. We have auctions. This year we're going to have an auction of all Mars memorabilia mm -hmm. and and anything you can think of, books, some really great stuff that you can get at the conferences. And we also sell online as well. Okay, when are the next conferences coming up in the next few months? We are having a conference in August uh, next month on the 11th and the 14th, and that's going to be held in Boulder, Colorado, at the University of Colorado at Boulder. And that's actually where the Mars Society started initially uh, back in the uh, late 80s. The Mars Underground started at the University of Colorado at Boulder. All right. Are there a lot of members of the Mars Society in the Bay Area? We do have a national chapter here, and um, there is a lot of us. I think there's like 150 members in the NorCal, we're called the NorCal Mars Society uh, chapter. And we have a large member list. We hold monthly meetings, absolutely. So where are the meetings held at, and what days? We have meetings uh, every month, once a month, and we sometimes have them at the San Jose Library and downtown the new Martin Luther King Library. Sometimes we have them at members' houses, uh, and or we have them when we're getting ready for an event to do locally, like uh, Sally Field Day at uh, Stanford, or the Space Day at the Tech. All right, that sounds very interesting. And John, could you tell me more about the Mars Society? And um, let me just say a couple things about the Northern California mm -hmm. chapter. Okay. Um, first of all, our next meeting is going to be this coming, well, not this coming, but Saturday, July 23rd. And the meeting will be at 1 p.m. at one of our members' houses. We are building some additional Mars analog spacesuits. It's going to be a, a working meeting. If people, if, if viewers are interested in coming, uh, they can find our Yahoo group. We have a Northern California Mars Society, Mars hyphen NorCal, or something like that. So if you search on Yahoo, you can find our mailing list, and we send out announcements with about when and where all the meetings are. And we do have meetings every month 
except for August. August we'll have our convention, which is, as Lucinda mentioned, is in Boulder. And so we will not be having a, a Northern California meeting this August, but the next one will be in September. Also, I talk about the analog spacesuit. Is that what you're gonna be demonstrating later in the show? Uh, I'm going to be demonstrating I'm going to be demonstrating wearing the Mars Analog Spacesuit, hopefully using some voice recognition technology with the Mars Analog Spacesuit. It's, uh, it's not a true spacesuit. It's made out of uh, plastic components, things you can get at Home Depot. But its function is both to, to show what a spacesuit looks like and to allow people to simulate some of the problems with wearing a spacesuit. Spacesuits are very bulky. They're very heavy. A lot of things we take for granted that we can do are difficult or even impossible to do wearing a spacesuit. Is the biggest problem using tools with gloves on? Is that uh, that's one problem. Um, that's uh, a major problem. Uh, there are also problems simply because, um, for example, a real spacesuit is extremely heavy right now. It weighs, I think, over 60 pounds. It may be more like 300 pounds. They're very heavy. And it's true that in orbit there's no gravity. On Mars, the gravity is about 40 percent of Earth, but there's just the mass that you have to move around even if there's no gravity. And consequently, they're very tiring to wear for long periods of time. And if I can say something on that, actually, because uh, I do some work on human factors, and that's regarding wearing a suit and doing simple tasks like screwing a, a nut onto a bolt, or mm -hmm. screwing a screw in to make a to make a repair on the hab, uh, possibly. And the the, diff, the 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 really quick thing that you notice when you put on a simulation suit um, is one, you're dependent on your air intake. So it's like your own uh, mm -hmm. environment. And if your air intake stops, you can't breathe. And second is in a real space suit, it's pressurized. So very simple tasks just to bend your fingers is very difficult. <laughs> it takes a lot of muscles when you're in a real suit to actually just bend your fingers. Um, one thing I have built is human factor workstations so that I bring them to things like space day at the tech where uh, children can put on the gloves and try to do simple tasks, like I said, <laughs> a nut on a screw. Yeah. And they realize very quickly how they don't have sense of touch and, it, and it's very difficult to get grips. So human factors is definitely, and wearing a spacesuit is definitely a very important thing to study. And that's one of the things we do at MDRS, the Mars Desert Research Station. All right. Hey, John, could you give us a demonstration of the spacesuit itself? Um, sure. Um, I, I will now get up and okay. put on the suit. <laughs>